Hello, fellow Rosarians. Thank you for joining me today. I have Yvonne with me, and we're at her gardens again. And if you saw the first video that I did, uh, when we walked around, everything was so beautiful. And a lot of you asked for more information and to meet Yvonne. And so I have a bunch of questions that I took down from your comments, but uh, Yvonne and I met on our trip to England. And so we spent almost two weeks together there and you were just taking notes and <laughs> enjoying the visit. I had no idea what her gardens looked like. And so when she invited me to come visit, um, I was blown away, just like you. Hi, everybody. <laughs> and thanks for watching the video. <laughs> a lot of people asked, how big is your property? It's 1.72 acres, um, including the house. So, yeah. 1.72. And then you've been um, gardening in this space for how long? For six years. Um, just we six. moved here St. Patrick's Day, 2017. Yeah. And so when you started, well, go, I'd like to kind of um, look at each garden space and talk about how you developed the plan. Um, but did you start with the space that we're in right now that's right off the back of the house? Actually, no. We started with the front, leading to the front door. Um, that was professionally done, and we're very happy with it. Um, there was nothing in the back. Um, I think maybe we can get a picture later. But it was basically bamboo, poison ivy, wild onions, um, a lot of black walnut trees, um, three black cherries, and there wasn't even sod. And we were so naive, we were like, oh, where's the grass? <laughs> this was too cold. Anyways, um, so the first 18 months, all we did was put down landscape fabric to try and kill the wild onions. And then we planted six trees, um, a river birch, um, a little, um, a little uh, magnolia, um, two cryptomeria, and two willow oaks. Um, and then we kept adding trees. And then, you know, after we took off the landscape fabric, we started thinking about how to organize the space. We knew we had a really um, big slope, and so we had to get some retaining walls, and we did that professionally. Okay. And so I think one of the biggest contributions the firm did was terracing and then laying out the paths for these three formal rooms really helped crystallize how I wanted to organize the space. Um, and I'd given them an inspiration, um, some inspiration ideas. This pool, mm -hmm. um, which we'll look at later, um, is very much uh, homage to Wellington Old Hall, the garden in England. I always liked boxwoods, had a lot of boxwoods in my old house. And so it went on from there. And each year we've done a little bit done more. Done a little bit more. Um, a lot of people uh, noted in the comments that you must have help. And I hope you take uh, that as a huge compliment <laughs> that this garden is impeccable, but you do it yourself. Not everything. Uh -huh. I mean, I wish I had a full-time gardener. Um, I do get help with three things. Um, we have a lawn service, so they feed the lawn. I actually don't care about the lawn. I would take it all out if I could. <laughs> um, but we have a lawn service, so they feed and cut the grass um, um, every week. Um, I, I do spray my roses, unlike you, who's very organic. <laughs> I do spray my roses, and so I have somebody who comes in to spray. Um, and I do have um, a company that looks at the boxwoods during the growing season, basically during May and June, um, because you know there's boxwood blight. And so they do come and inspect, and they, they prune them once a year. Okay, and yeah. they, okay, wonderful. Yeah. Um, do you have irrigation? I do. Okay. I have drip irrigation um, for the most part, except the sod. Um, we're on well water here, mm -hmm. and so we're quite um, parsimonious in using water. Um, generally, I try to keep it to once a week until we get into like the second half of July and August when it's really hot, um, and then we go to twice a week. Um, but I find that most plants after the first year, they really don't need that much water. Let's get into some questions really quick. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see. My husband put this together, so I have to read through <laughs> and see Thanks, what he said. Yeah. <laughs> so there's so many, there's so much praise in here. Um, and thank you for commenting on the YouTube. Um, I just want to mention again, one second, that Yvonne also has a Instagram. And so you'll be seeing a lot of her pictures there. And, um, if you have any questions, you can reach out to her there through the Instagram also. All right, so a lot of praise here, people talking about how amazing your garden space is and that it reminds me of um, just a park, how well it's maintained. What variety of boxwood are you using the same kind? I have lots of different ones. I have green velvet, I have green mountain, 
Um, I also have um, semi paragons. I've started using a lot more of the new gen because they're less um, immune to boxwood blight. Okay. And then in the Japanese garden, I have um, a boxwood nana. Um, and then in, I, in the apricot beds, I have uh, Jim Stelfer. I'm using, um, I have um, Little Missy okay, down in my star one. garden. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I have Sprinter Boxwood. Oh, yeah. And the only thing that I'm noticing about the Sprinter is that when it rains, they mm -hmm. kind of flop. Well, uh, and then they'll, you know, they're right back together, okay. but I'm just not sure if I like that about yeah. them, which yeah. is sad because we've done most of the property in Sprinter. Right. Yeah. Um, so I can't wait to see how the Little Missy yeah. do. Uh, and I do have mm -hmm. uh, Winter Winter Gem. Winter Gem. Winter yep. Gem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, before I forget, I should mention I am retired, um, and so oh. I spend about four hours a day during the growing season um, in the garden. And a lot of that is actually the roses. Okay. I probably spend about half the time on roses because I deadhead pretty much every day, mm -hmm. Monday to Friday, because yep. um, I like to keep the blooms uh, coming. So, yeah. I like, to, and I deadhead at least once mm -hmm. a day, if not twice, because I just mm -hmm. love being out there. Mm -hmm. But I think that's a really valid point that mm -hmm. when people assume that you have help, Mm -hmm. We're all in different stages of our life, mm -hmm. and my children are grown, mm -hmm. so and are mine. <laughs> I, I work from home, so at the end of my shift at 3 o'clock, I can get out there and work until the end of the day, mm -hmm. um, and so you just need to make sure that um, you're doing what you can and that your garden brings right. you joy. Right. You know, I mean, you earlier on in my life, I... I would buy plants and they would die because they would just sit outside my garage. I had little children. I just didn't have time to plant, um, et cetera. And now I have time. So yes. it's, it's really a joy. And I also became a master gardener. So I weed for my master gardener job and then I come home and I weed again. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, let's see. The names of the Japanese maples in the, uh, or the, in the Japanese garden, I'm assuming? Right. Japanese? I think I answered that online. Okay. Yeah. I, there were quite a few. Um, I have, in the Japanese garden, I have orangeola, um, which turns a really nice red in the fall. I have veribes, which is a lovely green. I have red dragon, which keeps its red better than a lot of the others. And then I have bloodgood, um, Japanese maple trees. I have, um, let's see, yeah, that, just quite a few. Osango kaku, which has the coral back, um, yeah. Somebody, um, before we start walking around, mm -hmm. somebody put a comment mm -hmm. in that they want to know if you advise on design, that you should consider it because oh, a lot no. of people would I mean, love I to... just, I do it for friends. <laughs> I do it for friends. I'm always happy to We're talk all to people. Friends, aren't we? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm really happy to talk to people. I mean, it, for me, it's just joy, really. I just, I just love gardening, so. Me yeah. too. It, yeah. it warms my heart. And mm -hmm. if I'm having a bad day, I want to be in the garden. Good, Good. day in the garden. Mm -hmm. Bored garden so I just I love being out there it's my happy space yep. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and take a walk about and Super. have you start talking to us about the Super. gardens okay so I suggest we start with a mini meadow with don't think we spent too much time there the last time and just some background um, that was completely full of invasive grasses um, and for a long time, I just couldn't deal with it. I'd just look at it. Um, and then the guy who put in the fence complained so much. He was like, this is like a jungle. Oh. <laughs> I had to hack my way through and then I felt really bad. And so we finally took out all those grasses and found that we had all this real estate there. Um, and it's a bit of a hill, which we kept. Yes. Um, and I decided to make that mostly natives. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are some things that are not native, like there's a Pansan cherry tree and there's a Japanese maple tree and there's a blue spruce. But there's penstemon, there's monada, there's coreopsis, um, there's blue-eyed grass, um, blue, little blue stem, um, agastache, um, um, butterfly milkweed. Um, so there's just a lot of stuff there. And I think of it as a pollinator garden. The bees love it. You'll see when we, I don't know if it's too early, but yeah. So okay, let's good. take a look at the mini meadow. Let's do that. Yeah. So this is the mini meadow. This area, when we moved in, was full of invasive grasses, scrub. We had some sycamore trees that were kind of impinging. Um, and it was basically just an eyesore. Um, the guy who put in the fence complained so much because he basically had to hack his way to find the boundaries. So about two years ago, I decided, okay, we needed to tackle this. And so we took out all the invasive grasses and found that we actually had quite a bit of land back here um, and there was a bit of a slope. 
I decided to make this um, a more native's garden, um, very pollinator friendly. And it was also an opportunity to use some hotter colors than I usually do. So let's take a look um, and I'll point out some of what we have here. There are a lot of grasses here um, and they're really nice with the wind, uh, they move. And there are also a lot of native plants. So I use a lot of hookura everywhere because I love the foliage. Um, this one is Silver Scrolls. Um, and then the native Palace Purple is there. There's some native Penstemon as well. And we also have some Acorus grass, that's the chartreuse color. Uh, back here, uh, the Camasia is finished flowering. We also have the Echinacea. This is a Pallida which has the drooping petals. You can see back there, um, about to bloom, the Verinicastrum. Some butterfly weed there. Hopefully I'll be able to get again some monarch butterflies. And then all the way in the back fence with the white flowers, you can see the Viburnum uh, winterther, which is another native. Drumstick alliums are about to bloom. Horiopsis is about to bloom. This is a really nice um, grass. It's not native, but it uh, adds a lot of movement. This is Mexican feather grass, Nacella tenissima. And then there's Yaru. I think this is terracotta. And in the background, you can see the purple agasashi as well as some of the Verbena boniariensis, which I use a lot um, in here. It reseeds and so it just keeps making more each year. Uh, this is Burnet, Sangosobia. And this is Monada, another native. The Perovskia is just about starting to bloom. This is a shorter version uh, called Denim and Lace. And here's another type of coneflower. This is Powwow. And here's the Penstemon. Probably should have cut it back this year. And this tall one is Solidago. Very nice in the fall. I'm probably going to cut this back about half to slow down the flowering and to also so I don't have to stake it. This little shrub here, the flowers are kind of spent as Itea. Really a nice three season plant. And this is a bit more of a shade area. And these two Styrax trees, I believe Kimberly pointed them out before. Um, they're pretty much the only trees from before that I kept. So a lot of hosta here. Um, Chartreuse shrub is Spirea ogon. Have some milkweed in here as well. And some native dwarf iris. This is a pretty variegated weeping dogwood. It's not going to get too much bigger than this. But pretty leaves and of course the pink lavender flowers in the spring. And then back here we have some native panicum. I think this is uh, Shenandoah. Some agastache that the bees absolutely love. more milkweed and one of my favorite grasses um, this is little blue stem this particular cultivar is standing ovation it's almost like a bluish tinge to it and then really nice tan plumes in the fall 
and then a huge stand of mountain mint which is quite aggressive so you do need to keep on top of it but smells really nice there's some miscanthus here but this is scout i believe which is not which is sterile so it doesn't spread some joe pie weed native and then also some Bactesia australis back here which is also native some liatris which is, looks like it's about to bloom more native iris behind the uh, Japanese weeping Japanese maple uh, the allium nigrum has finished blooming And the butterfly bench gives you a really um, good seat. I'm just going to turn around a little bit. Oh, and this is an, an aster. Um, with these thick leaves and that's a Tatarian aster. It has really incredible purple flowers in the fall. And then some cat mint on either side of the stairs as you go down. Some Mahukra over there. Some Galenia which will be flowering. So we might be able to get a flower here. And so must still be. Some foxglove back there, some lilies. Um, so it's planted quite thickly, which I tend to do. And over here is another native, little blue-eyed grass. So this bed doesn't require a lot of water. Most of these plants actually are fine with dryish conditions. And so once they get established, they're pretty much on their own. And there's some Millennium Allium, which is just about to bloom. A few trees in here, just three. There's the Kwanzan cherry on this side. There's a blue spruce um, and that's Katsura Japanese maple. So those are obviously not native, but they do provide spring um, and for the blue spruce, all season interest. And as you turn around from the mini meadow and come into the more formal part of the garden, you have a, a nice axis. And gives you a, a view towards the rest of the garden. And just to recall, there was nothing here before. There was just a slope. When we moved in, there wasn't even grass because we'd moved in in winter. There is quite a slope from this side of the house all the way to the bottom of the garden. So we knew we needed to eventually think about having some terracing done. And we had all of that professionally done. Um, the patio, the retaining walls and the walkways. Um, I chose gravel um, because it's less expensive um, than flagstone. This room, I had the inspiration from Wallerton Old Hall. It's a lovely, lovely garden in England. I love boxwoods. And so that was a lot of what I wanted to have put in here. And part of what I wanted to do was really create a sense of enclosure. And so you'll see that, I'm gonna walk a little bit here. I don't know if you can see behind the hydrangeas, there's a hedge, it's European beach, and it goes all the way 
um, around. It goes actually all the way to the bottom of the garden. And it really creates a sense of enclosure because just imagine if the hedge wasn't there, you'd see straight into the woodland. Um, the tall trees behind it are European hornbeam. And these have a naturally, um, this particular cultivar, which is Franz Fontaine, has a naturally vertical element. The European beech keeps its brown leaves during the winter. So even in the winter, you have a sense of structure. Um, it's not for everyone <laughs> looking at all those brown leaves, but I actually like it. The Annabelle hydrangeas are almost at their peak, I would say. Still got some chartreuse leaves, but a lot of the ivory, chartreuse flowers, got the ivory flowers in. And I cut these back um, probably to about 18 inches um, in the early winter. Roses on this side are pretty much over their first bloom. <clears throat> this is Leonardo da Vinci. It's done really well to Floribanda. Uh, that's Green Mountain uh, boxwood. And then this hardy geranium is Brookside. It's very similar to Roseanne that a lot of people are probably familiar with. Um, but this gets a bit taller, I would say, and spreads a little bit more. It has lovely red flowers, um, red foliage in the uh, in the winter and the fall winter. So this room has a lot of purple flowers. And so in addition to the um, hardy geranium uh, that I put in Brookside, I've got a lot of cat mint, um, a lot of salvia caradona, um, and also some betony, um, which is a stachys. <clears throat> this one is homolo, I'll get to it. And this is ballerina. It's a sweet little rose. It has really lovely orange hips in the fall. It's an end, one of the entries into the woodland, but we'll get to it. And over here, here is Hamalo. And again, the pollinators just love this area. And back here is Buttercup David Austin. It's an old one. I hadn't heard about it before, um, but found it at a Walmart. <laughs> Grabbed it. It's very sweet. And then there's some Iris Palida. Um, this is a variegata, variegated form, and um, tucked in the old garden rose back there. I think that's Fantine Latour, which is going to get much bigger. I'm sorry about the noise in the background. There's some work going on next door. So in the corner of this pool terrace, I have <clears throat> these lilac standards. This is Palbin, very fragrant. I've got some peonies, mostly Bowl of Beauty, the Joker, and Sarah Benhart, and lots and lots of aliens. So you have um, mostly purple sensation on this side and some ambassador as well. had a rainstorm last night so everything's got a little drench of water. The pool doesn't have any fish. We have lots of frogs, <laughs> um, a lot of water lilies that will come out when the sun is up.
some ladies mantle tucked in there. And then I've got these two Chinese fringe trees, which are finished blooming. They have a feathery white flower and very fragrant in the spring. So you really get a sense of enclosure in this space. And I'm going to make a quick detour to the sundial garden. And again here, I've got sugar and spice hookah bordering the boxwoods. Um, Plum Perfect Rose, which has been a workhorse for me. No black spot. There's some iris in here. This is Siberian iris, Caesar's brother. The Shibetiae alien have kind of done their thing. There's some Kalamintha, which I just did the Chelsea chop for. And then I've got Graham Thomas Rose and Etoile Clematis going up this way. Um, Iceberg has finished its thing. So let's go into the next room which is the white garden. So in the white garden, most of the flowers have white or cream or sort of chartreuse colors. Um, the Annabelles are a backbone. Um, the shape, the keyhole shape um, was introduced by the company that did the walkways and the retaining walls. It's, I really like it. Take you in now. So what I've got in here, I added lots of my favorite ground cover, Mazus Reptans. Uh, this is Alba, which has a white flower. Let's see if I can get some of the flowers. We've got the Japanese forest grass underneath the Annabelles. I've also got this dappled willow, which I really like. I've used it in my old house as well. It flushes out really gorgeous pink, white and green foliage. It has these gorgeous red stems in winter. They're looking a little shaggy now, <laughs> even though they were given a haircut about five, six weeks ago. They do grow very fast, um, and so you really have to keep up with them. Um, and I'm creating an allay with, with um, both of the dappled willows on both sides. Um, the white peonies have finished their thing. This one is crinkled, um, crinkled something, <laughs> forget the name. Um, the White Allians, um, Mount Everest, have also finished. Uh, there were white daffodils and summer snowflakes earlier. And Bleeding Heart and Alba as well. Um, there is some Agapanthus at the base of this amillary. Looks like they're just about to bloom. I don't use a lot of annuals um, just because it, ends, it tends to add up, um, so I'm very strategic, pretty much on the patio. Um, and this is one place where I do use annuals in this little half circle here. Um, and this is a supertunia, can't remember which one. And then I've got the tree rose bolero in there. These Annabelles are very happy. It took them a couple years to settle in. Um, this is a Snowball Viburnum, which is finished flowering. So the Amillary is a focal point on this side. Um, and the Blue Bench is a focal point as well, and a place to sit and um, kind of look at that. You'll see that I 
have lots of seating places. I really like to try and sit. Usually not during the week, I'm too busy, busy waiting. And again, in this room, you do get a sense of enclosure. Um, the dappled willows, uh, they're not going to get too much bigger, but they do provide a sense of separation from the next garden room, which is the rose garden. And on this side, you right hand side, you have the hedge as well as the dappled willows. So I like to think of this as a relatively quiet space before you get into the riot of color that is the rose, rose garden. On the other side behind the bench, I have three dwarf crab apples, Tina, um, with white blooms. I'm going to try and shape those more into a lollipop. The natural shape of those particular crab apples is more lateral. They sort of spread more horizontally, but I think I'm going to try and shape them into lollipops. Um, there are daylilies there. This is Joan Senior, but I think I'm going to take them out. It's they're really getting big. I use a lot of compost, so everything grows really big, and I think they're a little bit too happy there. Um, I need to cut back the summer snowflake. I've got some um, oriental lilies in there that will be blooming soon. Um, and this is Casablanca. And there is some white cone flower. I think that's a white swan. But again, the daylilies are just too much for this space. So be looking for ideas about how to revamp the space. Let's turn around so you can get a view from the bench. Entry into the rose pater. The layout is very similar to what I had done in my old house. It's basically four quadrants bordered with boxwood and big on portals. And so sort of the arch on that side, also somewhere to sit. Oh, I see different drums uh, yep, here. Yeah, some drums are stuck in there. Orion geranium is kind of swamped for... I think that's... Um, and look that's back the there at the um, that arbor. Um, that is new dawn to the left of it. Perfect. Peggy is kind of done with her. Yes. Her thing. Does she, how many, how many, do you get another, any other flushes out of her? Very periodic. Very okay. periodic. And then this is the Lady Gardener. I see distant drums here. Distant drums is there. Red Eden in the back. Um, Desdemona. Um, Harding Nell. Um, all the way to the back is the Annick Rose. And then there's a cluster of Queen of Sweden. Um, my hollow car is back there. I was thinking of shovel pruning that. I actually moved it out of the bed in preparation. I'm not fond of mine either. It's very thorny. Mm -hmm. But when it blooms like that, it kind of looks pretty. So mm -hmm. it might survive. <laughs> <laughs> Another year. Another year. And then tucked in back there, I've got a couple of old garden roses, but they're not bloomed. They didn't bloom this year. And then um, your whites? 
So that's what I think is actually Sarah Austin. Mm -hmm. I was trying to figure it out for the longest time. Um, again, it was mislabeled when I got it. So it's really a climber. So I think when I rework it a little bit, I might actually um, train it on the fence. Mine are in shrub form also. Really? Yeah, they... Um, but does it throw out long canes? Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. No, but I've got two of them, and they're both, mm -hmm. um, you know, shorter stature, although it says that they could be a climber. Yeah. Who's your dark purple over here? That's Twilight Blue. And that's Pantoo, which is my really, really short black stuff. Do you struggle with trips? No. No. Thank okay. God. I haven't had any issue with trips. <laughs> My lighter colors get it. Yeah. And let's go. And then the amethyst rose right there. So these are 18. So this is going to be a rose alley or rose walkway. Alley is just a French word um, for alley or walkway. Um, and I'm growing different types of roses. So I've got Pretty and Pink Eden, um, Eden Eden. Um, I've got lavender lassie. Look at it. First year. Look at it. It's growing so uh -huh. quickly. Did you get this palatine? Palatine. Yes. Yeah. I'm always so happy with how quickly her roses take off for us. And then this is um, um, Souvenir de la Malmaison. And I've got the same clematis on all of them, which is this. It will have bigger flowers in subsequent years. Um, this is superb. Um, uh, clematis papura elegans. Um, I really love your pronunciation of everything. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I always tell people, you know, when it's in Latin, none of us was around, so we just pronounce it. Yeah. Confident. This is Superba at Celsa. I'm very happy with it. Oh, I remember you telling me that you yeah. were going to get that. Yeah. It's an improved form, so I'm hoping it will. And then this is Claire Martin. Claire Martin? Uh, Martin. I think it's without a T. Okay. So I'm not sure if it's... For morning, nothing is my parents uh, morning and friends. Um, this is a little crazy right now because I didn't get around to deadheading. Um, but there's a Rosa Mundi there. I'm not deading, he deadheading that because I want the hips right. um, in, the, in the fall. Um, this is a uh, love, love, love song. Love song. Um, and then Sir Emmanuel, uh, Cathedral Bells behind that. Uh, that's Bashida, which looks sadly neglected. <laughs> That had a little while. Um, this is Romantica Pink, right here from California. Oh, right. Was it Rosemantic? Rosemantic. Rosemantic Pink. pink. Okay, Rosemantic and this pink. one? This is, um, I think, is this Eustacia? I think it's Eustacia Vi, yeah. Okay. Um, the poet's wife is that bright yellow. Um, so this bed was one of my no dig experiments. Um, so I basically used a bunch of cardboard, put some water in it, put about five inches of compost and about two inches of mulch. I did that in the fall and then I planted last spring. And everything here grew so much faster than anything ever has. Really? I mean, it really makes a difference. Um, so um, that Yjula is probably big for that spot, but I'll just keep pruning it back mm -hmm. because again, I like the burgundy contrast. Um, with the green here, um, and there's a clematis. I love it also because it just gives it such depth. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so this will. There's some iris in here. There's some lily that's finished. These mumps will get the Chelsea chop as well because otherwise they'll just get too big. Okay, tell us about this area. So this area is the apricot bed, um, and that's because I wasn't sure I really liked apricot as a color, so I've kind of segregated a bunch <laughs> of apricot roses here, um, and I'm sure they'll grow on me. Um, so, so you still haven't decided? I, the still, I think out. at this point I, I kind of committed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you I, see here I'm using warmer gravel. I did not. Oh, I do see that now. Yeah. If we look back up here, and why did you decide that? Because I just feel like the apricot is warmer tone. Okay. Um, it goes with the brick fountain. Mm -hmm. You see that I have the Hoopera caramel, which is again in that warm tone. Um, this mine box has warmer colors to it as well, um, and some grasses. This is the also ties in. So a lot of the roses here, you will 
um, know many of them. I, I have to admit this new bet I haven't memorized where everything is. Um, but this is Augusta Louise. Both of these. Mm -hmm. It looks like it needs some what iron. What is this here that's blooming? This is verbascum. 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 With a V. Okay. Yeah. It's really nice and it will rebloom. I've cut it back um, a couple of times. It's reblooming. That's very pretty. And I put in the weeping uh, pussy willow again to provide some winter interest because even without the leaves, you're going to have this weeping form. And then it kind of echoes the um, weeping cherry in the back, which flowers in the spring. That weeping cherry was a gift when I, um, I um, retired um, from a group of um, African women um, at my organization. Um, they know me well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One a very generous gift certificate, and I, I got that. Did And are you pl using the same color blue um, throughout your garden of your obelisks? Yes. Okay. Um, and I will get the name for you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> someone asked. Parting um, Mill? That's Parting Mill, um, Tree Rose. Um, it's looking really nice. Parting Mill is actually the rose that made me think, okay, maybe I do need some apricots <laughs> after all. Um, this is the Cocos Rose, um, and then Lady Gardner, um, So Fister, and Ray Dow, which is doing really well over there. Oh, and your favorite rose, but it's not blooming. Bless. That's Bless. <laughs> I know uh, she's gonna, too close to this. But. She's going to be the star of their show. Well, it should all be bliss. <laughs> yes, oh my gosh. <laughs> so I've got Capulca, I've got Colette, um, I've got Our Lady of Shalot. Mm -hmm. And this one's I'm in love with. It's faded now, um, but you can see from the bud that it starts out really orange. And this is Tatin. Oh, um, mine hasn't grown. Yeah. Oh, really? How <laughs> yeah. long have you had it? Two and a half years, three oh, years. No. It's still kind of a band. Oh, no. Um, yeah. Good. And then we have Grace um, here as well. And then Love and Peace, which actually started this whole move because it was in the pater and it was just too gaudy for me. But then everybody who came to the garden would always ask about it. Okay, the garden, the rose garden, you can see it um, like a beacon calling us uh, from down here. So we're going to get up close and look at the standards. And have you been happy with them? I uh, am. Yeah. This is their first year. Um, it came as a pretty good size. Look up here. They are actually really nice looking, much larger than mine were in mm -hmm. their first year. Mm -hmm. These look great. And then what variety of box do you have here? Uh, this is, uh, I believe, green mountain okay and then this is your manga tree cream in front here we'll have blue flowers in the summer and then some aster for fall winters beautiful um, and then here we have some day lilies um so what these, color these are like a purple with a yellow throat i believe and um um, vanilla, strawberry, hydrangea, obedient plants or disobedient plants, as I like to call it. Because it's really <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I like your uh, statue here. Yeah. Very pretty. And the iris are kind of done. Mm -hmm. um, so this tree is, um, I took out a Bradford pear, which is invasive in Virginia, and put in this um, uh, dawn, um, dawn, dawn tree. I don't know if that's the name. But really pretty leaves. It looks like a conifer. Mm -hmm. um, Beautiful. Actually, um, it's the city. We've got another bench here to take in the views. Right, and so sit here and you can just sort of take in a lot of feature. Some of strawberry hydration. Do you have a favorite garden out of all oh of your assistants? It's like having a favorite child. I know. <laughs> I must admit, I do sit in the rose garden a lot, um, and I sit in the pergola, not so much in the Japanese garden, but it's in the pergola and look at the Japanese garden. This is New Dawn. This is New Dawn. I want to get close to this bud. What a stunning rose. How old? 
This is three years. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Three years, so people. Three years, like, 2000, yeah, 2000. Wow. Beautiful. Yeah. All right. And then um, your Japanese garden. Yeah. So this is, I like to say it's a Japanese inspired garden because, you know, you have to be very precise to call it Japanese garden. Um, but it's very soothing and you can feel the temperature drop as yes. you come in here because it's so much shadier. Um, I knew I wanted to do, there wasn't much space here uh, in terms of doing the whole, you know, you can do a really nice thing with raking of gravel and all of that. Mm -hmm. um, but I knew I wanted to hear the water and so it kind of came in between the trees. Um, these are black walnuts which are really difficult to plant underneath because they emit this thing called juggler which kills a lot of things. So um, you have to burn up a little bit. Um, but I, I find it very restful um, oh, it's sitting here. Beautiful. I yeah. love the sound. Yeah. And then a lot of signature plants here. Again, you feel enclosed, you've got some burgundy color, a lot of texture. So I like playing with texture. So grasses, you know, which are very wispy. And then you've got the, um, uh, the big um, pasta leaves um, as well. We are ready flowering. This must be a lovely garden to be in, especially when it's, you know, 90 plus degrees. Yes. And it's, it's nice cooler and cool. in here. It's nice and cool. So I added a couple of benches in here. So I'd probably say I'd sit here more in the summer. What variety? Is this Jack Diamond or? No, uh, this is Jack of Diamonds. Yes. Jack of Diamonds. This okay. is Jack of Diamonds. There's been a, there's some Solomon seal there. And all of this section, this Green around the, the Solomon Seal was from a house that was being demolished um, from somebody at my church, and they were like, "Oh, if you want to come and get plants," so you know, a couple of us went, and we got a lot of plants. Wonderful! <laughs> um, and that was three years ago, and it's done really well. Um, this is uh, a variegated osmanthus. Thank you. Topiary here is the Japanese uh, Hongo juniper. Um, some Japanese beach fan. Ladies mantle. Is it sweet up. spire or that's a, a sweet shrub. Sweet shrub. Polycampus. And then this is is this buckler? No. This is a weeping red bud. Weeping red bud. Yeah. This yeah. particular one is lavender twist. I love it. And ladies' mantle. Ladies' mantle. Um, some emerald tiara pasta. Some pulmonaria, which is finished flowering. Spanish bluebells are finished. Um, this is Aurelia. And again, so if you stand here, you can see, even though it's a woodland and it's a shade garden, there's a lot of color interest mm -hmm. going on. All the way in the back, you can see the smoke bush. Um, I cut mine back every year just to keep the leaves bigger and to give it that color. Um, so I, I'm not too concerned about getting the smoke part of the bush. Um, and a lot of shoe trees. Um, I love it. Breeding heart. Um, so that's still bees blooming. Uh, some Chinese ginger and sweet woodruff. And you can see I've used mazes to join the um, path um, throughout. So this usually blooms. Actually, you can see. Blue. Yeah. It's a little blue. Um, and again, this whole section here, this is the native coral bell. Um, this one is um, Pucha Velosa. This is an um, autumn bride. It has these huge ivory plumes in the fall, in September. That's larger than I'm used to saying. I like yeah. it. Well, this um, one of my friends who owns the native's nursery um, stopped by one day with a trash bag. And she said, um, I think you'll like these. And I kind of looked at them and was like, I thank you, I think. I know. <laughs> and she said, you'll thank me. And I did because Aww. the next year when they came up, I was like, wow, these are really nice. And it's perfect. They, yeah, and it height. covers a lot of seeds. And it came with all this little chocolate chip ajuga, which has blue flowers um, in the spring. So it's really nice. This is a Campanula, Korean bell flower. And this was three little plants from Etsy. Oh, wow. Three years ago, and it's fresh. So again, it's one of those things, it's a little bit of a thug, so yeah. you have to have the space to contain it. Um, but, you know, since I had all the space to fill, I like things that's red. This is an interesting Solomon seal. A lot of people use the variegated corn. 
Look at this pretty thing. And this iris is just, I mean, it was one of those irises I got at a plant swap. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure the variety name, but I just love it. It's, uh, and I see your allium is still in bloom back there. Which variety is that? Oh, so I'll tell you a secret. Those are spray painted. Oh, I love so we that. Have, we have a joke in our garden club where some people, we you know, we spray paint our alliums after they're done. Yes. Just to keep the color going. Um, legend has it that this is something that Martha Stewart Rex said or did. I'm not oh, sure that's wonderful. true, but it's kind of a fun thing. I love it. So here we have the best features and there's some roses back there there are a couple of the roses and there's the rest and I will move them out <laughs> running out of space <laughs> how fun I do have to tell you about this path which is made from um, the Bradford Fair pear that we have to take down but I didn't have enough of it. And so I drove around, you know, our neighborhood looking for people at trees down and left notes in nine mailboxes and said, well, I see you have some down trees and if you're not using it, <laughs> do you mind? And six people actually got back to me and said, if you can pick it up, it's yours. So I got wow. someone to help me. And, you know, he cut it up with a chainsaw and we placed them. You know, I mean, it's not going to last forever. It probably lasts about four or five years. But it's, oh, it's wonderful. You know, I mean, I saw this on Pinterest. <laughs> so you need to start looking for your next tree. That's right. <laughs> Tell me if you're going to cut any trees. You still see the burgundy going on here. Mm -hmm. Also in this little area. Um, this has yellow flowers in the fall. Coral Bell. So these are my limelight hydrangeas. They're not limelight prime. These mm -hmm. are limelight. Um, and I probably cut them back about half. Do you really? Okay. Um, but they, they've been pretty sturdy this year. I think they're still standing firm. <laughs> this Japanese fern is Ghost, which is a really nice cultivar. Is that the same one as this? No. Same family, but different, different variety. Yeah, different variety. So these trees are among the first trees we put in: the river birch, the magnolia, the willow oak, and the cryptomeria. Um, just filling in with ferns. Um, Your bench is so perfect for this area, isn't leaf it? Bench. Yes. Yeah. Well, you know, when you sit here or stand here. a quiet view because you can see the bowl of the fountain. Um, there's always birds on here. And you have my favorite house, the curly frogs, right there. Oh, wonderful. And magnolia. And magnolia. This is starting to bloom. Which Friday? Uh, this is little Jess. Okay. Which is not so little. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it smells really good. Uh, this is Kenny Lauder's walking stick. It looks really good in the fall. I mean, in the winter with the leaf shot because it's got this contorted structure. Mm hmm. Um, and this is an example of, you know, focal point doesn't have to be a sculpture, it can be a plant. Mm -hmm. yeah. I haven't gone through this side oh. when I was here last. Okay, let's see that. We've got some Brunera, this is Jack Frost. Uh, this is Lily Pimaster, which I love a lot. Mm. This is Beauty Berry. It has these really nice um, blueberries, purple berries. Purple. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, this is a very good um, hydrangea, light of day. Um, that's Bad Bay. And Hot Slow. All of these houses. Ajuga or no? This is um, this one, Lamium. Lamium, okay. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. All of these were gifts. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is Kalinja, which is um, 
What's the common name? Because I've heard of it. Oh, it's um, the Carolina white... Silverbell. Okay. Oh, yeah, you can see the pods. It has white flowers in the in the um, beautiful. So yeah, so I think we're almost at the end of the circle here. Um, so make some azalea trees safely away from the black walnut. Um, this is my azalea um, here. It's really pretty in the spring with the purple flowers. Um, tomatoes. And then another little path. More of Facebook marketplace stones. <laughs> have to start looking at Facebook Marketplace I think because you I need should. stones. You should. There's all this stuff. And you, 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 can, you can probably transport them. It's just so hard to believe that your garden is only six years old. Yeah. It's well, I'm working I think on the manure helps. And I did so the trees I did get, you know, trees that were at least ten feet. Okay. So. And I like what you've done here with the three um, Aberbidi together. Yeah, this is again to provide a sense of portal. Um, you know, I really wanted to do a moon gate and it wasn't affordable at the, uh, at the time. It still isn't. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually it will be, maybe. But um, this provides a sense of, you know, entry. You know, just imagine you came in here and there was nothing. Yeah. You know, it does. And then the hedge provides that sense of enclosure. And if you turn around, you can really see those principles. Look at the red, the golden red buds. This is hard to gold. Beautiful. You know, really, again, when you're standing there, that's like a focal point. I mean, you have a focal point with the boulder fountain, but that gold really catches your eye. And then you have the burgundy of the Japanese maple. Um, you have the nine buds. And then you have the copper beach um, to the right, which, um, again, provides that interest. So one of the things I think that's really important about gardens is that gardens are very personal. It's your garden and, you know, whatever makes you happy. It may not make someone else happy, but so long as it makes you happy, that's what's most important. I agree. And you have created such a beautiful space here. So I hope you enjoyed that walkabout as much as I did. Yvonne, thank you for sharing your garden again with us a second time. And maybe we can have you have us out again in the fall or when you have more color. Thank you, Kimberly. Thank you so much for doing this. And thank you all for watching. I really appreciate your comments. Um, happy gardening. See you in the next one.